Night Moves, written by Jonathan Killerman, an Alex Delaware novel, read for you by Sheldon Romero. Chapter 1 Nice house, if you put aside reality. Sunset Boulevard, Sunday at 10.30 p.m., was an easy ride. Cool, April air sweetening the Seville's interior. To get here from my place in Beverly Glen, I'd driven through Bel Air and Brentwood, turned south a quarter mile into Pacific Palisades, continued through tree-lined stretches of architectural revivals, colonial, Spanish, Mediterranean, Greek, and unidentifiable. Not a thorough street warning at most corners, a planned community discouraging casual visitors. GPS tutored turns led me to a street named Eveda Lane, three blocks terminating at a cul-de-sac. Built in the 70s track, the Palisades, but no Palisades in sight, this was flatland, geographically undistinguished, too far from the ocean for someone to smell the brine. In the Midwest, respectably middle-class real estate. In L.A., not a single structure worth less than a million. The house garnering all the attention sat atop of the dead end like a cherry on a Sunday. One of the aspiring colonials, heralded by white columns, its brick facade strobed red and blue by LAPD cruisers. The same light show played upon a black Range Rover and a gray Lexus sedan in the driveway. All that wattage courtesy of half a dozen cop cars circled around a white crypt van waiting to transport. The crime lab van sat nearby, lights off, unoccupied, no sign of the coroner's investigators, come and gone. Uniformed officers stood around doing nothing. Radios barked police calls, dispatchers' voices impersonal as they chronicled the evening's malice and misfortune. Soft, spring breeze, the yellow tape bellowed. Just outside the tape, a mud-colored Impala I knew to be Detective Moses Reed's current ride sat next to a white Porsche 928, in which I'd been a passenger more than once. The off-duty drive shared by Lieutenant Milo Sturgis and his partner, a trauma surgeon named Richard Silverman. Reed had arrived just over two hours ago, taken one look and called the boss, Milo, suffering through a charity dinner for Rick's employer, the Cedar sinai ER sped over from the Beverly Hilton and called me. What's up? I said. Ah, complicated. See for yourself, please. He met me just outside the front door, wearing a hooded paper suit, booties, and gloves. Yeah, I know, I know, I look like a giant sperm. You don't have to abase yourself. Tax nearly finished. He peeled off the suit, revealing a saggy black suit with lapels dating to the house's construction, a white shirt and a silver tie that had to be Rick's. Very GQ. This almost tucks, he said. Damn banquet. I had to take the pants out three inches. Four would have been better. But enough of my problems. Let's go see a real one. The paper garb had led me to expect horror and chaos. Milo opened the door on a surprising calm. A two-story entry floored in wax walnut was centered by a mahogany table hosting a vase of silk roses. A bronze chandelier cast reassuring light. To the left, blandly pleasant landscape paintings filled a white wall. To the right, a blue carpeted staircase traced the accent to a small landing. Milo continued straight ahead toward another wall decorated with skenosis and broken by an open doorway. A form moved into the gap. Mo Reed, young, Rudy, still wearing his paper suit, but not the hood. Pink skin showed through his blonde buzz cut. The suit was tight in places, power lifter arms testing the tensile strength of wood pulp. 